Any question? You can obviously have multiple situations. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, like this one. <laughs> Everything in your team. <coughs> yeah, that's fine. That's a you didn't provide enough uh, stirrups. You didn't provide enough uh, ringlutinal reinforcement. You have corrosion. <laughs> <laughs> your structure is. Uh, you should have a job. <laughs> <laughs> we should. You uh, demo. You need to replace that thing. Uh, yeah, you actually replace it. <laughs> that's happening more than this. Yeah, Dr. what do you think about the dark room? Yeah, the building collapsing in your own ways. Uh, based on these cracks, width of these cracks, <laughs> how much of these cracks you can decide you need to replace your structure or fix it. You have two options, replace or fix. Have you seen that? Yeah, many times. Yeah, let's watch this video. We have a reinforced concrete beam between this support and another support, and we have two concentrated load. Where? We have one here and one here. So if you can expect flexural or bending cracks at mid-span vertical crack, if your beam start to fail, we can expect your cracks near mid-span vertical cracks like this, due to insufficient longitudinal reinforcement. Vertical crack. As you see, it's vertical. Mm -hmm. Nothing near support. So we don't have issue with the shear. Our issue right now was bending <coughs> and the longitudinal reinforcement. So if you found these cracks, you need to understand there is something wrong in your beam before, before what? Before this one. You got it? So, Cracks will give you indication, hey, there is something wrong in your beam, <laughs> pay attention. Is that a lab over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it lab? <laughs> one more <laughs> test. <laughs> so the first one, we have vertic vertical cracks near mid span. So we have a beam also, simply supported with two concentrated load, but this time we don't have issue with the longitude and we have issue with shear. See what will happen. It's a blind bridge. Can you watch this crack? Yeah. Can you watch this one? We have inclined cracks near supports. Inclined cracks near supports. Nothing. Maybe you have in between also. Maybe you have in between. But the main issue is your shear. <coughs> inclined crack near supports. This cold, we don't have shear reinforcement, enough shear reinforcement. You got it? Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have vertical here also. That's fine. Bend. Both of them, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
So based on location, shape of your crack, I can tell you what is the problem in this beam. What should I, uh, 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 what should I, uh, I do for this beam? Just for your information, just what will happen if you have cracks in your beam? I have a beam here. And this beam supported, and we have cracks near mid span, vertical cracks. That means your longitudinal reinforcement are not enough. What is the solution? If I would like to fix this beam, what should I do? I need to increase your reinforcement. That's right. But how? I already have uh, hard <coughs> concrete. How can I put reinforcement <coughs> inside? Maybe compositing. Yeah. What, what should I do? Maybe, yeah, you can add a column, but uh, no way, I cannot add a column in this area. No idea. We have many methods, very old method and very uh, new method. I will talk about the new one. Uh, do you know something called fiber reinforced polymers? Or there is a type called carbon fiber reinforced polymers. Something looks like my clothes okay. with black color. Something like this. If you put some epoxy on the concrete surface, epoxy, bond material. Adhesive. Then put your sheets or, or layers of carbon fiber on this uh, epoxy. Then wait for seven days. Once you are done, your FRB or your carbon fiber or your polymers with the epoxy will make a layer maybe stronger than your steel reinforcement. So I added more reinforcement, but this time I can call it external <coughs> reinforcement. This one method. But we have uh, some disadvantage. This one is sensitive to fire. If you have high rise, uh, increase in temperature, you have increase in temperature, maybe sun, from sun or whatever, or fire, no way. For uh, um, heated water, no way. Cannot support any heat for this epoxy. Also, we have another issue, but this one for a bridge, maybe you can add external boost tension. I mean, we have many different way to fix your structure. The other option, remove your beam and build a new beam. Sometimes, to fix your structure. I'm sorry? You say can or You can, you can, you can. You can add external post tension, you can add external FRB, you can add, you can make shirt for your, this very old fashion. Hey, I will uh, remove this cover and I will add new concrete around <coughs> this one with new form work, increase your concrete dimension by adding new reinforcement, then pour your new concrete. Very old fashion, this one. I'm talking about the very old methods. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, the cost to fix your beam is much more than to remove your beam and build a new one. Sometimes. So it uh, depends what is the situation in your uh, structure. Anyway, one more thing I would like to talk about. We have something called development lens. And we have something called splice lens. Yeah, lab splice lens. What is the difference between lab splice and development lens? 
What do you think? Do you have your roll-up? Yeah. <coughs> Can you describe this one again? Yeah, of course. Can you catch this roll-up from this point? Catch it? Yeah. Catch it? Oh, you saw it. Go ahead. Why? You cannot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Catch it more li like this. Like this. More lens. I cannot. That's right? So, <laughs> most of the time, most of the time, your steel reinforcement, you have attention force on it. Based on your design. Do you remember? Do you remember? When you designed your reinforced concrete beam, I told you, hey, we have co a compressive stress block on this bar, you can get equivalent force C. We have tensile stress, so we can get tensile force T. That means your reinforcement is under tension. Uh, to ensure this force, in your reinforcement to be transferred to concrete in a sufficient way, you have to provide something called development lens. Here is your bottom reinforcement. We have a tensile force in it. But this beam, or I'm sorry, this reinforcement does not have <coughs> development lens embedded your concrete. So, if you pull this reinforcement, we don't have enough lens here. So this one is wrong. The best scenario, your reinforcement, bottom reinforcement, must have developments like this embedded in your column. If you would like to pull this reinforcement by T, I think this development lens will make more support for your reinforcement. That's right? So, development lens means we need enough lens. <coughs> your bar embedded your concrete to support the tensile force in these bars. You got it? How much is this lens? It's more complicated. We don't like to go through all of this stuff. Just for your information, we have something called development lens. Your steel reinforcement must have enough lens embedded in your concrete. If you would like to get what is the development length for each bar, you need to figure out how can I use this equation. Uh, we have many different factors. Maybe the first factor, UT, most of the time can be taken as 1.3. If you have enough depth of concrete 12 inch. The second one based on what is the type of steel reinforcement, if you have coating, uh, which is called coating factor. If you have uh, epoxy coated bars or without uh, coating, uh, so based on what is the shape of your reinforcement, I can figure out what is the value of this factor. Uh, also, reinforcement size factor. Uh, what is the diameter of your bars? If you are talking about number uh, six bars or smaller, your factor will be 0 0.8. If you are talking about any other bars, one. Uh, lambda in your equation based on what is the type of concrete. We have a, a concrete <coughs> called lightweight concrete. Lightweight concrete means, just for your information, normal concrete has gamma equal 150 bound per cubic feet. Do you remember? Uh, for each cubic feet, one feet time one feet time one feet, this cubic feet will weight 150 pounds. This for normal concrete. We have sand, we have aggregate, we have cement, we have water. Everything is normal. So we can produce normal concrete. We have another type of concrete called lightweight lightweight concrete. Maybe your gamma, something around 100 pound 
very cubic feet. Wow. So this one can give you FC prime equal 4,000. This one can give you FC prime equal 4,000 also. So the same strength, the same design, everything is the same. What is the difference between this one and this one? This one can give you dead load too much. But this one, dead load <coughs> is less. Because your gamma equal 100 for each feet by feet by feet, you have only weight 100 pounds. But this one can tell you, can give you 150 pounds. But for this one, more uh, expensive a little bit because you will use specific type of aggregate, which called light weight aggregate. Not aggregate, but coarse gravel uh, or coarse aggregate. Anyway, it's not uh, gravel or not uh, stones, something else can give you the same strength but less weight. So lightweight concrete, if you are using lightweight concrete, we will use lambda equal 0.75. If your tensile strength of concrete is given, you can get your value of lambda by this equation. Anyway, uh, we have another factor, CB plus KTR divide DB. Your DB is the diameter of your bar. CB cover of your bar, KTR you can take it zero, or you can get it from this equation, uh, which called transverse reinforcement index. <coughs> so by the way, we have something called development lens. We need to provide additional lens embedded in concrete for your steel reinforcement. This embedded lens must be greater than or equal that's all. Uh, for the development length, uh, do you have to build the column and the beam at the same time so it can be embedded, or can you build one? Sometimes your development length will not extend to the column, maybe stop here, at the top of your beam. But if your development will extend, you need to bore both of them at the same time. Okay? The second one, which is called lab splice lens. Do you think what is the difference between lab splice and the development lens? <clears throat> the same idea that I covered in this morning. 